Guild Wars 2 allows you to experience its content in so many ways because of how different the classes are, but many players are afraid to try out new or difficult builds because they don't want to experience discomfort or mess up. But to me, that learning process is what's fun, and figuring out how a new playstyle can fit into the current situation motivates me more. If you agree, then you might be interested in learning the Power Chronomancer build for endgame PvE content. It has some tricky combos you need to learn, but it has some of the highest utility out of any DPS class with plenty of CC, blocks, plenty of boon removals, and the ability to use any of the powerful Mesmer utility skills, making it a great class to invest time in to learn. So I will be showing how I play the Power Chronomancer in Strikes and Raids, the build, skills, and how I handle mechanics while performing the role. Like all Power DPS builds, you want to reach 100% crit chance, with the added 25% from Fury. I get this done by using a mix of Assassin and Berserker stats, as well as the Accuracy Sigil and the Rune of the Eagle. The armor and weapons are all Berserker, so take the Eagle runes with Berserker armor, Berserker weapons on the Greatsword and Swords with Force Accuracy Sigils, and then on the trinkets I take all Assassin's trinkets except for one accessory, which is Berserker's. Take all the damaging traits in Domination and Dueling. Most of them are just passive, but the Sword trait requires you to hit with sword abilities to gain the extra damage, so sword is going to be your main damaging weapon set. Improved alacrity will give you extra damage and will reduce cooldowns by even more than normal alacrity, but will also reduce the duration of it, meaning your supports who normally can provide permanent alacrity may not be able to do so anymore. Luckily, you can provide yourself some extra alacrity when shattering, and while the F1 shatter is a core part of the build, you can add in some extra shatters after your F1 is cast to get more alacrity. Also, keep in mind that Chrono Phantasma will do quite a bit more damage, but delay your clone generation, so you can't just spam shatters if your F1 or Continuum Rift are about to be up, because it will take a bit before you can get enough clones to shatter. Your highest priority skills are your Weapon Phantasms, so the Greatsword 4 and the Sword 5. Not only do they do the most damage because there's two sets of them due to Chrono Phantasma, but they also give you clones which you're going to need for your F1 Shatter. This is going to do the most damage, so you want to prioritize using the F1 Shatter. And only use the F2 Shatter if you have an excess of clones and it won't delay the use of your F1, so always use your F1 off cooldown when you have three clones, and usually when you're in your greatsword you'll have an excess of clones because you get two clones on the phantasm, so only use the rewinder when you're in greatsword because you get an extra clone from the phantasmal berserker, or when you're using continuum split because you're getting tons of clones there. Of course, use the F3 to CC when needed, and the F4 can be used to go invulnerable, which is an extremely useful ability when it can be used to survive rough situations or to ignore mechanics, allowing you to deal more damage instead of doing that mechanic. So the most basic priority of the build is to cast phantasms to do damage and create clones, and then use shatters when you get the clones. Then we fill in the gaps with the Well of Calamity, the Phantasmal Disenchanter, in Greatsword the 2 and 3 skill, and in the Sword the 2 skill. The Sword 3 ability also has an interesting mechanic. On top of giving a clone, you can swap places with that clone, and it will be on the second cast, so you can delay it, and you can also avoid a lot of mechanics by just porting through them by using this, so it's a pretty interesting skill for a gap closer. There are many utility skills that can be useful in certain fights like Well of Precognition, which pulses three Aegis out to your teammates, can reduce much of the pressure, or help to handle the mechanics of some fights like the Maitrin, Kadim, or Deimos encounters. You could also take the Blink or the Portal for some extra mobility for yourself or for your team. You can take the 
feedback for more reflects or if the fight doesn't really require much utility you can just use the mantra of pain for a no animation extra bit of damage your heal skill signet of the ether recharges all of your phantasm skills so you generally want to use this right after you've used your great sword 4 or your sword 5 and then use them again it also recharges your disenchanter but the skill is not that high priority because it's not as much damage as the other ones. I would prefer to use the Well of Calamity before Disenchanter, but if you're going to use the Signet of the Ether soon, try to make sure that the Disenchanter is on cooldown. If your Phantasms are almost off cooldown soon, don't bother wasting your Ether Signet because it takes up animation time to do so and you can just use other skills instead while waiting for the cooldowns naturally. Gravity Well, the elite skill, is great for CC, but it also does great damage. So decide when you need CC and when you don't and use it accordingly. If you thought this wasn't that complicated, then good because now is when the hard part begins. Chronomancers have access to a fifth shatter, the Continuum Split. Using this skill enters you into a space-time continuum where any skill you use during the duration which gets longer the more clones you shatter, will be returned to your original cooldown status. So you want to use a big combo of skills in your continuum rift and then leave and use all of those skills all over again for a huge burst. The issue with this is that you need to first get clones generated before you can use the shatter. And if you use your clone generation skills, which are your highest damaging skills, then you can't use them inside the Continuum Rift. So you either need to start with your sword to generate clones and then burst in your greatsword or start in greatsword and burst with your swords, depending on how the rotation has progressed when you're ready to use it. You also need to refrain from using Well of Calamity and Signet of Ether when you see your Continuum Rift is about to be off cooldown. If you delay your rotation enough just to prepare for a Continuum Rift, it isn't worth it and you may as well just continue your normal rotation. And if you are likely to be interrupted, or the target is going to move shortly after, you don't want to waste your Continuum Rift, so you need to understand the encounter and predict when the best time to use your combo is. On your next weapon swap, you will start the combo. So the combo starts even before you use the Continuum Split. You get your clones out in one of your weapon sets with your Phantasm and then your Greatsword 2 or your Sword 3. And then you're going to swap and then you use either your other one, the Greatsword 4 or the Sword 5. Precast that into the Continuum Rift. Immediately use the Signet of either and then use that same skill again, either the Greatsword 4 or Sword 5. Use your Gravity Well and Well of Calamity next. If you need your Gravity Well for CC soon, it's fine because it's going to come off cooldown anyways. Just make sure not to use Gravity Well outside the Continuum Rift if you need to save it. Then you use Disenchanter, and if there is time left, you use Greatsword 2 or Sword 2. If you're using the Mantra of Pain, both charges will come back, so use those whenever since it's an instant cast. Also, your Shatters will come back, so if you can, just use them while inside Continuum Rift, since you will be generating tons of clones anyways, and you'll get extra alacrity for using them. Once you get out, just repeat the entire process, of course, not using Gravity Well if you need to save it for CC. Then just keep following the priority of using your Phantasms first. Fill in the gap with your lower cooldown weapon skills first, because they often can be used twice if you use them early and then longer cooldown skills like Well of Calamity and Disenchanter when you have nothing else to use. Also, because your sword auto attack is much better than greatsword auto attack, and you get the buff while in sword, it's better to stay in sword if you don't have Well of Calamity or Disenchanter up to fill the gap between your greatsword skills so you aren't stuck on it. But if you can't melee the target, then it would be better to stay in greatsword. Now this can be a lot to learn at first and by no means do you need to perform it perfectly your first time. I've been playing this for a while and I still can't comfortably use all my shatters in Continuum Split. So don't be afraid to just spam your skills if you get lost in the rotation. And just keep to those key priorities of using the Phantasm of that weapon 
as soon as you swap to it, and then use the Phantasm again right before swapping to the next weapon. I think it goes without saying that you're going to need to practice this build to be able to perform on it in a strike mission or a raid. So get yourself to the DPS golem and start practicing or go to a dungeon or some other low pressure situation where you can use the build and think about how your skills work in a real situation. So here I'm going to show the doom encounter and the decisions that I make while trying to fulfill my role to complete the encounter. So we're going to start out, of course, by using our clone generation and do the continuum rift combo. I'm going to actually use the gravity well twice outside of my continuum rift there because there's no CC that I really need to do in this encounter. So we're not saving it for anything. So we can just focus on doing the damage there. And I've got the bomb mechanic, so I'm going to finish off my sword abilities and then I'm going to use my phantasm first in my greatsword so that while I am kiting off this mechanic, I can get some value from my cooldowns recharging. And when I come back, they're off cooldown and we're going to be able to continue doing damage. I'm going to use my signet of either here because the continuum rift is not going to be off cooldown anytime soon. And I'm going to use the Well of Precognition here because during the time that the boss is being moved, it's likely that the boss is going to face one of the squad members. And if they get auto attacked, they could go down. So blocking that can be beneficial to keeping our team alive. Now we're going to do our burst here right before the boss goes into the center of the room. So we just want to use our phantasms here just before they leave. And now they're going to go into the center of the room and we want to put our backs to the wall and then grab our souls. Now the boss has taken all of our boons. So I want to use my greatsword four and my disenchanter because those will remove boons from the boss and that'll prevent them from doing a lot of damage to our tank or being, you know, protected by having protection. So I've got my continuum rift up. I'm going to do the combo here. I'm putting down the wells under the boss and I've actually got no quickness. So that was unfortunate because the boss ripped all of our boons and therefore we had low uptime on quickness and therefore I couldn't get a lot done in my continuum rift. So you gotta really pay attention to whether you have boons or not because if you don't have quickness, you're not gonna be able to do much in that continuum rift. So unfortunate, but that's something you have to pay attention to. And now, we're going to be doing the greatsword burst into the sword abilities. The signet of the either is up now, so we're going to use that. I could have used the disenchanter first, but I didn't. And now the boss is yeah moving around quite a bit here, so I use the well of precognition again just to keep us safe, get that Aegis out. And the boss is going to do the greater death mark again, so we need to put our backs to the wall. I precasted a disenchanter, but it looked like the disenchanter didn't really go off. So I'm going to use my signet of the ether and I'm going to use my greatsword four and the disenchanter again and get rid of all those boons. So yeah, the chronomancer has quite a bit of boon removal. I think it's probably the highest amount in the game. So in those encounters where you need it, it's just, you know, a one and done. You don't need to invest too much into it. So now. We've got our continuum rift up again and I want to use it, but the boss is moving around a bit. So I'm going to actually just use it right here and put down my wells, but the boss moves out of my wells, but I see that they move away. So I'm going to use my phantasms first and then use my wells where I think that the boss is going to move because I see where our tank is standing. So you have to kind of like predict where a boss is going to be and sometimes put your wells there because the last hit of the wells is the most important hit more so than the ticking damage so now i've got the shackle and the boss is at 14 percent so i move away and we're just going to phase it to 10 percent and then we've got to do the mechanic where we collect the little souls so we get sent into the air just try to be a little bit considerate of your allies you know don't compete for them if you see someone's closer, then, you know, obviously let them get it. 
but uh, yeah, just make sure that you yourself survive by getting five of these souls. And I am designated to the heart seal. So I'm gonna look at that and just face it. We wanna stack boons for our allies here. And I'm going to actually use the well of precognition on my seal because you can block the pulsing damage outside of the protective bubble. And that'll help keep me alive long enough for me to get my job done and then get back to the protective bubble and do my burst. Now, I don't have my continuum rift up and it's gonna be up in like a few seconds after I need it, but it doesn't really matter. You could get less value on your continuum split because the window of burst here is so small that I can't get really full value on it anyways. So we pretty much did our full burst anyways. And now we go back out to the precognition well for the Aegis to keep me alive and the boss is pretty much going to be dead. So that is how you play the Power Chronomancer. If you like this content, please like the video, share the video, and subscribe if you'd like more. With that being said, enjoy your journey, and I will see you all next time.